coders. There's a saying that there are 800 people in the entire industry of developer relations. But now it's $7.99 because after five years of being in the industry, I decided to end my time as a DevRel and work full time as a software engineer. Making the decision was not easy. And in this video, I'm going to tell you about my experience in DevRel, what I would like to see changed in the field and how I think the field needs to change in order to show the business value in order to keep the field alive. I want to preface this with a warning. This is my personal experience in DevRel and this is not a universal experience. These are just things that I experienced. You may have had different experiences and those are totally valid. I am making this video for those who want to learn about how they might improve the career path and use this to learn from my experiences. The warning here is that I will definitely be alluding to my previous employees employers. And with that, I will allude to previous coworkers, employers, and companies that I've interacted with. I will not be naming specific names. However, if you do believe that I am talking about you, I apologize. And I hope that you could use this video and my experiences to learn and as potentially unsolicited feedback about how to grow and evolve to be better and to better yourself in the field. I personally was not coding enough and I will take 100% blame. I wanted to be writing more code and I wasn't. That's just number one. I felt like my skills had severely stagnated and I just wanted to be writing more code. It's, it's not that deep there. Number two, many companies who hire DevRels never actually know what they want from their DevRel team. You'll see a lot of listings for one person DevRel teams that are expected to basically hold up the entire developer ecosystem without any sort of support. You'll find that smaller companies expect their one person DevRel team to do the job of several people, including content creation, community management, blog post writing, content writing, documentation, tutorial creation, social media management, conference talks, hackathon support, attending conferences and planning conferences. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. That is so many hats for just one head. And that is expected at a startup, but that is still a staggering and overwhelming amount of work just for one person to maintain. With many startups who are hiring DevRel, I also found that they are either hiring a DevRel because they couldn't find someone qualified for a technical marketing role and they figured that just reframing the job would be a good fit, or they're only hiring a DevRel because their investors told them that they needed a DevRel. The real question is, do they, actually need a DevRel right now? And the answer was probably not. And the answer is usually probably not. With larger companies, it's a little bit easier for DevRel teams because they can handle the extra spend in order to support a more robust DevRel team to handle all of those different aspects of the DevRel team and have a strong understanding of what they're looking for when it comes to measuring success of DevRel. And we'll get back to measuring DevRel in a few points from now. Number three, the influencer to DevRel pipeline. One of the biggest hiring metrics a company can use to weigh the success of a potential person in a role is having a strong track record of doing that certain role. So they will put that in the job requirement or have it a nice to have for the job requirement. They want people with experience and that makes a lot of sense. It seems like hiring an influencer seems like pretty smart and logical connection for filling a DevRel role, someone with experience making TikToks, tweets, videos and writing. But is that a actually good match for a DevRel person? In my personal opinion, the answer is no. DevRel is more than just being able to follow a social calendar and create content. It's also working towards a goal that the company sets of growth and expectation. I found that many companies push the influencer agenda and that are pushing it, find that their DevRels in the end aren't adding value that they're hoping for um, to meet the company's end game. And it ends sometimes not in the best way possible. Point four, another personal one. I want my online self to be separated from my work. I found that in DevRel, companies and peers would conflate my ability to tweet, be funny online, create funny content with my ability to deliver as a DevRel, which in my personal opinion is not all that there is to DevRel. Yeah, I can go viral on Twitter and TikTok, but does that mean that I'm actually able to generate a community around a certain product while gathering depth and understanding for that technology and step in and be a leader for that technology? In my personal opinion, not at that moment, maybe one day, but the way I was running my DevRel career, I wanted a more hands-on experience to achieve that. In addition, I also wanted 
to be able to make videos like this and say how it is. And I felt like as a DevRel, I was consistently always watching what I had to say in order to not put a company at risk. I feel like I have even more ability to be candid now than I did while working as a full-time DevRel. Number five, DevRel is very difficult to measure. We need to remember that at the end of the day, companies have business goals and those business goals need to have strong metrics to prove the worth of each team. It always felt like we were fighting to prove our worth to the company. And there was always somebody saying that the leader, the director had to appeal to the board of the directors or the C-suite that they needed the DevRel team and that DevRel needed to exist. Yes, the companies paid our salaries, but it always felt like a year long experiment that you never knew if it was gonna last. Six, no one knows a good DevRel strategy. Touching on the measurability point, there are hundreds of blog posts, conference talks, Twitter threads, YouTube videos, even books about how to create an effective DevRel strategy. The theory is there. It does in fact exist, but the application of the theory is much more difficult. This is because, as I mentioned, DevRel is difficult to measure. You need to cater your DevRel strategy to whatever expectations a company wants from the team and create a strategy and execution around those expectations. You are throwing darts at a wall to find a strategy that works to meet the business's end goal just enough so that then your DevRel team can continue to be an authentic DevRel team and do the things that makes them happy and appeals to the audience while still giving developer satisfaction and employee satisfaction. What makes a DevRel team happy in their job is not always what makes a C-suite happy with the DevRel team. This becomes contradictory in a way because DevRels are supposed to be the authentic ones at a company. DevRels aren't necessarily supposed to care about the business end goals because they're the ones on the ground in the community and they need to be relatable. A common saying in DevRel is that developers hate sales and DevRel is not sales. The second a DevRel team starts shilling is the second it turns into sales. Number seven, it's always the first to go. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Number seven, it's always the first to go. DevRel was once given the analogy of being like an avocado. It's a good and healthy fat that you add to the meal, but say you're trying to lose weight, it's probably gonna be the first thing that you remove. This is embarrassing to say, but in my time as a DevRel, I've been laid off three times due to restructuring and financial issues at companies. That's insane to fathom and maybe i'm bad at picking companies maybe it's just a reflection of the time but i want to work in a job and at a company where i know that i am an essential part of that business regardless of the financial state or restructuring following my previous point devrel being immeasurable means that when it comes time to make decisions about who to keep and who to let go devrel's value add at a company doesn't prove that it is an essential part of the business and that devrel is usually seen as a superfluous ad that is hard to track how it adds to the end goal of the company Number eight, a technical role with non-technical respect. A good DevRel writes code. A good DevRel has a technical background. A good DevRel is technical, but more often than not, DevRel is conflated with marketing because the work is extremely front facing. Many times though, DevRel is covering all of the edges and missing pieces that a proper engineering team should be doing in, sh in order to ensure a happy community and successful growth of a product. This non-technical sentiment is also directly reflected in the pay and treatment of the DevRel teams by the company. Number nine, personalities and the DevRel grift. Every career and every industry has its fair share of good and bad people. Whisper networks, off the record and back channeled referrals are always a great way to help clear out many of these grifters. However, more often than not, those grifters fall through the cracks and slip through every day. The issue is that DevRel is small enough that those not connected into the industry and those hiring for a DevRel role make bad decisions. DevRels are, as I said, like influencers in a way. Taking a strong stance on a concept is a must. Having strong opinions and being loud with them are surefire ways to garner attention and gain respect in communities. However, these strong stances come with strong personalities that aren't the most understanding many times and lead to 
not the most agreeable of coworkers. I have been burned many times by my DevRel coworkers, having them lie about me, manipulate me, and more. And I was fed up with falling into those crosshairs in the DevRel community, in the DevRel experience. This is probably my most sensitive topic, sensitive DevRel experience. And I'm not going to cover a lot about it. And finally, number 10, DevRel is very career limiting. There are only so many companies and so many types of tools that really could utilize a DevRel to its fullest. Now that I'm a software engineer, it feels like my opportunities and options are endless. If anything were to happen to me, I know that there will always be a need for my skill. With DevRel, it always felt like I had to dig and dig to find a qualified company that could utilize DevRel to its true extent with a well-established DevRel team and good management. Now, on the other hand, as a software engineer, a company with a well-established software engineering team with good managers is basically available on every corner. So I don't feel so constrained anymore. Those those are the 10 reasons that I left DevRel and am now a full-time software engineer. Again, if you feel like I may have talked about you in this video, I hope that you might be able to grow from my perception. If you are a DevRel leader, potentially you might be able to grow from the things that I've said. If you are a DevRel peer, potentially you could grow from my experiences. These are why I left DevRel and this is not my normal kind of video that I hope to make, but I hope this answers a lot of questions and is educational for those who are maybe thinking about going into DevRel. If you enjoyed me and hearing from me a subscription would mean the world so definitely be sure to like and subscribe share with your peers in the devrel space um it would mean the most to me but yeah um you could find me online anywhere at ending with ali on twitch twitter threads tiktok instagram at ending with ali i promise i'm usually more fun than this good luck have fun and don't die thank you so much for stopping in